Hello there and welcome to this EU4 guide winning the 100 Years Wars England and Iron Man. This is taking place in the most up to date version of the game, currently patch 1.9.2. I'm Oscar Mike and I hope you enjoy watching. Okay, let's begin with advisors. We want plus 10% morale for our military advisor, plus 2 diplomatic reputation, and minus 3 national vault risk. We're going to sack Henry Percy. And we're going to accept our mission to improve prestige for the plus one stability. Immediately ask for fleet basing rights from Aragon and embargo France for that increased power projection. We're going to assign our best general to the south of France in Gascon, commanding that army to attack Armagnac. We're going to pick up our troops in Normandy and return them to England. And we're going to send our 20 light ships to blockade the Mediterranean, the south of France. And the aim of this tutorial is to keep France under 100% blockade over the entire duration of the war to maximise the amount of war exhaustion they suffer. So in a moment we're going to unpause the game. Alright, we're ready to roll. Aragon has accepted. Sometimes they won't. That's not a problem. Just form a royal marriage with them, improve relations, and eventually they will. Alternatively, you can get fleet basing rights from the papacy. So we're going to look at the outcome of this battle. I expect to win. We're not getting great rules, but don't expect to get lucky all the time over the course of 100 years war. We're going to pick up our troops in Normandy, send them to England. And we're going to hope we're going to, yep, we won this battle easily, stack wipe them. That's the benefit of having uh, additional morale from our military advisor. Very important in the early game, I'd say. Morale is the most important factor in the Hundred Years' War. So we're going to get access from Aragon and Navarre. And then we're going to evacuate this army from Bern via Navarre and return it to England. Okay, I'll take this moment to explain the overarching theme and strategy behind this guide. Uh, France has overwhelming military resources. They will outnumber you heavily. Given France's tendency to call in Hungary in patch 1.9.2, this is exceptionally difficult. We're going to see Hungarian troops coming to the south of France very shortly. So you cannot possibly hope to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with France in even terms. You have to pick your battles wisely. You have to defeat the enemy through combining local superiority of forces to overwhelm their troops sieging your provinces. And I'm going to be showing you all about that in a moment, but for now we're just concentrating evacuating our troops from France. Now, you can see something very important that I'm doing here. Royal marriages, you need to max out and make efficient use of your diplomatic reputation slots. What I mean by that is you need military access from four countries in order to achieve our objective of winning the war. You need military access from Navarre, Brittany, and Aragon. In addition, Portugal, although that's not nearly as necessary as the other three. And since you're going to be maintaining those diplomatic, re diplomatic relation slots, you want to have royal marriages with those countries so you make the most efficient use of those diplomatic relation slots. And part of the reason for that is you absolutely must avoid the War of the Roses. If the War of the Roses triggers while you're trying to fight France and their masses of vassals and Hungary, you're going to have a very difficult time. I'm not saying it's not doable, but it's certainly more difficult. You're going to see some hilarious things happen. Uh, over the course of this video. It is it is a very entertaining battle, but as you can see here, I've identified a uh, five stack of troops without a general, and I'm attacking uh, them in cow to stack wipe them and eliminate them. This is the strategy you see here, uh, picking at the weak parts in their army. They're going to reinforce, but by the time we get there, we're going to be out of there. Also, you can see a very common event that fired rebels in Gascogne, nationalists, very common event. Uh, it will tie down the French troops and be of enormous asset to you. Okay, so I eliminated that army and now I'm going to pull out because I can see that there are French reinforcements on the way. And now they're diverting to the Cascone to take care of those nationalist rebels. Those rebels are very helpful. They'll inflict a lot of war exhaustion and attrition on the French. Now every time we return our armies to England, we we're going to make sure that we form a new army it is up to full strength. You can see there, 13,960 men. And 
we're going to return them to Carl, and we're going to use this new refreshed army to attack Normandy, and we think we can stack wipe that army because it has less cavalry, significantly less numbers, and is currently leaderless. And that's all because those rebels in Gascon rose up to distract the French. This is exactly how the opening phase of Hundred Years' War should go about. You should be looking for weak targets to cause maximum war exhaustion and attrition in the early parts of the game, all the while maintaining 100% blockade. So we're going to look at the results of this battle. It is a leaderless enemy army. We have higher morale. We're getting decent walls. We've brought in reinforcements to make sure we stack right them. We don't want them retreating. Another good roll. And so we stack that wipe them. 8,000 enemy units killed. Split army in two and evacuate immediately. We don't want to wait around for the French army. This strategy revolves around avoiding direct confrontation with the French army. It's the only way you can consistently win the Hundred Years War. You will inevitably get bad rolls. And when you do, it can be calamitous if you're fighting a big pitch battle. So we're going to fight our battles and make sure we're guaranteed victory before we get to the stage of rolling. So we're going to evacuate those armies now. And we're going to reform them. And we're pretty happy with the way in which the war is going, of course. The overarching theme of this strategy is, given the fact that we cannot possibly hope to beat France in terms of manpower and the quality of their troops is better, we're trying to set up the conditions onto which Burgundy will inevitably attack France, and that is doable. It is very possible, but it is tricky, and in order to do that, you need to maintain maxed out force limits at the entire, over the course of the entire war, and you can see why you can't afford to waste manpower in this guide. You have to have a full army, and your army has to be reinforced. You also need to maintain high levels of manpower and keep your fleet. Don't disband your heavy ships, because we're absolutely going to need them to enforce the blockade. So as you can see, they're going to attempt to uh, siege up Cow and Normandy once more, and we're going to take this opportunity to use our mobility, our superior mobility, on our transport ships to attack them with our troops. I'm going to wait. We're fairly confident we can stack wipe this army in Normandy. It's not a French army, it's a vassal. So we're farming war exhaustion and France's vassals, eliminating their manpower whilst boosting our own prestige. Prestige is very important. It boosts our troops' morale and increases the likelihood of us stack wiping the enemy forces. Now we see the uh, French armies approaching and we've worked out that we will not have the time to engage this army and retreat. It's too high risk. If that army were to catch us, uh, we would be in a dire state of winning this war. Uh, I should point out now that it is absolutely unacceptable to even lose one battle while attempting to win the Hundred Years War. Not in patch 1.92. Perhaps in the previous iterations of the game, but in patch 1.9.2, you cannot afford to lose battles. You're going to suffer too much war exhaustion. Your manpower is going to be extremely limited. You absolutely have to preserve your forces at all times. Okay, we're checking on the War of the Roses events. It is uh, slowly increasing, and we're going to have to keep an eye on that. We've got maxed out royal marriages to increase the possibility of us getting an heir and we want to avoid the war of the roses at all costs because suffering from it is really going to be absolutely devastating so we're going to move into burn now the purpose of this attack is as a purely a diversionary attack we're going to lure french forces into the south of france and we're going to try and pull some of them out of position so we're going to move into toulouse and you can see them now coming to the south to try and engage us, but we're not looking for a battle. We're just trying to trick the AI into overcommitting to this defense. And that can open up the possibility for us attacking uh, their besieging forces in Normandy, which is what our target is at the moment. I'm going to move back into Navarre. Now we got our transport ships in England ready to uh, take over 14,000 men and attack at any weak spots in the French line. 
constantly looking for opportunities to do damage and stack wipe smaller vassal armies of France, thus boosting our prestige and contributing to the enemy war exhaustion. Now we're going to move our army out. We're going to see if we can capitalize an opportunity here to attack Normandy. Now here's the diversionary attack into Bern. Checking our advisors there. Notice an advisor died, which is a huge problem, but we can't afford to hire any more advisors at this stage. We need to preserve our money. Okay, so the diversionary attacks work. They're sending troops to the south of France, so we're going to pull back. But unfortunately, it hasn't worked that well because they're sending troops back to the north to cow to defend, and we cannot by any means take on the French army in a one-to-one -one situation. Even if we win, we'll suffer such high losses that it won't be it'll be purely a Pyrrhic victory. Okay, a very important event's happening here. This will happen if you have troops stationed in the bar, the French will attack you. Even if you have a 14 stack army in the bar with a uh, with your best general, they will attack and we're it's going to take full advantage of this by reinforcing this army. Now we're counting on getting some good rules here. If we don't, we might as well restart. So a 2v2, can't really complain about that. Rules are fine. They're enabling us to fight this battle. And we've got our reinforcements coming. Very important that you reinforce any battles in the bar very quickly. Yeah, and we're winning this solidly. A 6 to 1 roll. Very fortunate. So we are going to be able to win this battle. It's by no means the end. We're going to have to fight many of these battles before we have any opportunity, any chance of winning the 100 Years War. But we'll take it. And we won nicely there, something about 2,500 casualties, inflicting about 5,000 casualties. And we're going to immediately counter-attack into the south of France, trying to stack fight these armies and, if possible, relieve some of these sieges, especially in Labord. That will help later on because it will reduce our war exhaustion in the short term and build up the siege. So this should be an easy win. We're up against a two-shot general. We have overwhelming superiority of numbers. We've got an even roll, 8-8. Eight and we should be able to stack right this army. And we've done that. So that's always going to be our primary objective. Focus on the small stacks, wear them down. Now that France has aborted their attack because they're attacking into superior numbers, we've uh, identified an opportunity, a 1,000 man group of troops in Armagnac. We're going to try and eliminate them to build up our prestige and cause war exhaustion in the enemy. This strategy fully revolves around causing maximum war exhaustion to the enemy forces. And we've eliminated that and we're going to see if we can push into Gascogne. A lot of what you'll see here is me constantly moving, trying to get the French out of position so I can attack their small stacks. Now, sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. It can have totally unintended consequences, but always be mobile. Don't have your troops standing in one position for too long. Always try and use your superior mobility with your 14 transport ships to a probe at the enemy lines. Another thing that is very important to note I do not recommend transporting troops to the Mediterranean and by that I mean with your transport ships you'll suffer a lot of attrition in the journey and I tend to find it is very high risk with very low rewards. So we've identified a 7 stack here that's vulnerable, we've got some mercenary reinforcements we just enlisted and we're going to attack it and hope now we've got a very bad roll there as you can see 0 to 9, uh, that's very unfortunate, that may well uh, prevent us from stack wiping the enemy force, but you can't win every roll. That's a much better roll. we got to eliminate this army quickly, because as you can see, there's 11,000 Hungarian troops that are making their way to South France. I think I mentioned that in the early part of the video. Yes, that will happen. Hungarians will... You can fully expect the Hungarians to spend a lot of time fighting you in patch 1.92. Now, because we lost that initial roll, 0 to 9, we were not able to stack wipe them. Now the Hungarian army's attacked us, it's leaderless and it's attacking over a river, so we should be able to mop this force up, hopefully stack wipe it with some good rules. 
Not that it matters, Hungary can afford to waste their troops in 100 years war, it's not going to have much significance, but obviously if we lost a lot of troops here it would be dire for us. Okay, so we stack wiped it with 11,000 troops killed, and we're going to, we see the French army moving in to reinforce, and we're going to withdraw. Make sure we have military access from Aragon if we don't have it already. Now we're going to suffer some attrition here moving into Navarre, but that's not an issue. So far we've done exactly what we wanted to. We've identified weak spots in the enemy line and we've established local superiority there to stack right the enemy armies. Thus avoiding the type of attritional conflict that we can't possibly win. If we're going toe to toe with the French, we're going to lose. They have oftentimes three times as many infantry as you and three times as many cavalry the same again so we cannot afford to fight pitch battles even if they go our way we have to stack wipe them okay we're just withdrawing our forces now we're going to spread them out across Aragon something I forgot to mention that uh, earlier on we had built an extra four trade ships uh, we're going to be using them for the blockade, anticipating some of these sieges in Gascogne, Le Bord, Normandy, Cal that we're not going to be able to relieve. Uh, that's going to put uh, greater pressure on ensuring that our blockade is complete, and that's going to require more ships to keep that blockade at 100%. So we've identified another one stack here. It is a vassal army, but we're going to eliminate it nonetheless. Uh, you know, take it out and then get out whilst trying to minimize attrition we're suffering. And that's extremely fortunate. We've got the uh, plus one stability from our mission, having prestige over 50, and that's going to uh, help our economy. Now, I, I did make a mistake here. Well, uh, you know, I spoke too early. Now, this is an interesting question. One stability or 33 prestige, I guarantee you in any situation, any other situation, I should say, it's always better taking the prestige hit. But since we're in a war and we can anticipate fighting a lot of battles, 33 prestige is actually pretty critical. It's a massive morale boost. So unfortunately, we just have to take the 100 admin point hit and opt for the it for retaining our prestige. And we're keeping a careful eye there on the progression of the War of the Roses. It's it's not in our hands. We have maximum number of royal marriages. I believe we're on four, so we just have to hope and pray. Although we are getting to the stage where we're gonna have to anticipate the War of the Roses happening and maybe have some troops stationed in England in that eventuality. And you can see this is a very common occurrence. France will attack you in Navarre. It is not a safe place. The advantage of fighting Navarre should be pretty obvious. It's a minus three modifier to at an attacker. That's because it's mountainous and it has a river. It also reduces the combat with the battles, ensuring that even if you're outnumbered three or four to one, provided you have, I think it's around 12 or 13,000 troops, you'll fight with the same effectiveness regardless of how many enemies that the uh, how many enemy forces are being thrown against you so it's a good place to keep a 14,000 man army with a good general and they can confidently hold out against significant numbers of French troops the only concern is with morale and that's why you have to ensure that you have reinforcements on the way because you don't want your morale to go to zero if it does you'll have to retreat so we're just withdrawing our 13 stack here, see if we can create some havoc in the north of France. We see a 5 stack Hungarian army besieging Normandy. See if we can identify that as a possible target, perhaps by landing in Brittany, something we have. Now this is very interesting, this will happen from time to time. 24,000 French troops launching an assault on Le Bord. Now that it does have, the walls have been breached, so I'm a little concerned about this. I'm going to watch and see what happens. And I haven't, at this stage I'm feeling fairly safe because it was at a relatively full garrison, but as, as we see, it looks like the French are going to take it out. Now as you can see they were in zero morale there. I probably had an opportunity to engage and eliminate that army, but that opportunity was passive. Unfortunately, the, the last day of the siege was the last day of the month. 
I think it was the 31st of March. So, the, the day after the siege, the next month, and of course at the end of every month, your troops replenish and you get increased morale. That's when your morale replenishes. So, unfortunately, that did not line up very well for me. There was certainly an opportunity maybe to end the Hundred Years' War on that date in 1446. But, again, as luck would have it, uh, we were not we were not able to capitalize on that. We are able to capitalize on another Hungarian army. This time the Hungarians are sieging my castle in Normandy, quite a far away from home. They've got their king and all fighting the battle, but we're gonna we're gonna try and stack wipe that army in a theme that should be very common by now. And we're doing a good job, we've eliminated it. And there's no other uh, good target, so I'm gonna retreat into Brittany, which is fairly safe and see if we can capitalize on any other battles. Just withdrawing from Brittany, you want to make, we're also sending further troops into Brittany because we've identified some weak targets as a leaderless French army and cow. Now they still have reasonably high prestige, so we have to be careful about that, but certainly the vassals are extremely weak at this stage and are very good targets. So we're just going to have our 26,000 troops here and see if we can identify any small stacks that we can eliminate. And that's going to be that we're still in the opening phase of 100 years. We're only two years has progressed, so those are our targets. And this is all at this stage about maintaining the 100% blockade, which we're not actually doing at the moment. As you can see, I've kind of made a huge mistake in that with the siege of Laborde, I haven't accounted for that. And so we're going to have to send some more light ships over there. But... This stage of the game, in the early parts of 100 Years War, all about building up your own prestige, retaining manpower, and inflicting as much damage as, as you can, possibly in the French. And we're just using our mobility, transporting our troops about, returning to Navarre, see if we can identify any targets. The whole purpose of these maneuvers is to isolate weak stacks of French vassals, eliminate them, boost our stats, harm their stats, contribute to their war exhaustion, and so long as we can keep high levels of manpower, which we are currently, win the majority of our battles, keep high prestige, keep our navy intact, ensure that we're constantly at the max force limits and that armies are reinforced, all the while uh, significantly damaging the French. We're ever so slowly increasing the likelihood that Burgundy will attack France. That's that's the objective of this hundreds war, 100 year war guide. Forget about trying to defeat the French and all their vassals and the Hungarians by yourself. Even if you did, you even if you were somehow able to from some milk, you'd be such in, a, in such a perilously weak state. There are of course other guides to winning the 100 years war. Some people advocate teching up, so be putting all your stats and getting to tech level 4 and then fighting your battles, but I tend to find that the French will always beat you to tech level 4 regardless of what you would do with your national focus. And of course that's because their leader at this part of the game is significantly better than ours. Our leader is the worst conceivable leader you could think of. So we're in a bit of a lull here. Just trying to maneuver, using our superior maneuverability, trying to identify any weak armies. If we can't, if the enemy is doing what it's doing now, which is grouping up and being fairly disciplined and not having isolated armies out in the map, then this is when we have to start uh, being a bit more risky and entering French territory, perhaps to loot, to try and draw some of their forces out, out of position so that we can capitalize on their weakness. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to hire an administrative advisor because we don't have an admin advisor level one. That is very unfortunate. Another unfortunate thing that can happen besides advisors dying is generals dying. If you lose Richard Neville, that's a, a real setback. But if you lose uh, Richard Plantagenet, which has happened on a new multiple times in my playthroughs of 100 years war that oftentimes can be absolutely devastating i really feel like you need to keep your generals preserved and if they die which does happen you're in a significantly weaker position 
course, one of the ways you can avoid your generals from being killed is fighting rarely and ensuring when you do fight, you win easily, and trying to limit the amount of attrition your armies take. Which, of course, can be helped with military access from Aragon and Navarre. So now we're focusing on maintaining the 100% blockade of France. As you can see here, the disparity in forces raised is absolutely staggering. The French have around 70,000 men. I have, uh, I believe, around 26 or 27,000. So a huge disparity, and it doesn't get any better because their manpower recovers a lot quicker than you do. So, like I said, you cannot hope to beat the combined forces of France, their vassals and Hungary uh, in, a, in, a, in a set piece engagement. You have to entice Burgundy to attack France and that's all about slowly weakening them while keeping your own strength at a high level. I tend to find that if you can damage France's prestige then that helps in getting Burgundy to join the war so that's a very important factor. Now that, that so ends the siege of Cow. What we, we it's fairly clear that we're not going to be able to uh, we're we're not going to be able to contest our northern provinces in France any longer. Those provinces are very much gone. Normandy will be soon to follow. Always holds that a bit longer because it's got a three thousand man garrison. Now you can see here, I'm, this is the first time I'm at, I'm replenishing my troops. The first time I've been recruiting troops. And I'm, I'm recruiting regular troops. You want to del uh, uh, delay recruiting mercen mercenaries for as long as possible because of the increased expense. And we're going to accept a mission Occupy Paris. Seems uh, extremely optimistic at this stage, but things are going well for us despite having suffered uh, the loss of Carl and Le Bord, where, as you can see, plus 16% war score and the war exhaustion is extremely similar. Now, here's the problem. War for Roses, 88.5%. I've got maybe five, six months until that event triggers, so obviously the decision to recruit troops now in England is in anticipation of that. I've already got 14,000 troops in England, but I'm going to have to reinforce them if I'm going to fight the War for Roses and France at the same time. So at this stage, things are certainly dire. I am very concerned about this playthrough, but we're going to press ahead and do everything we can to try and win. And we've finally re-established a 100% blockade of France. Troops are almost ready, so we're going to rally our troops in London, the province with the highest supply level, in anticipation of our War of the Roses event that I am not at all looking forward to, but nonetheless, we And what would you have it? By some miracle, the gods have smiled upon us and we just got an heir literally a few months prior to the War of the Roses event firing and he's a very good air and the reason why he's a very good air is with the four diplomatic skill at this stage of the game that is the minimum level required to a uh, to uh, procure the Byzantine refugees event which significantly reduces your technology cost for I think it's about 50 years a very powerful event it requires a leader with four diplomatic skill. It fires once Constantinople falls to the Turks. Of course, veteran EU4 players will know all about this, but anytime you have the opportunity to get a four uh, diplomatic skill leader, absolutely go for it. So that sets us up very well in the future of the game, but we're still concerned about the immediate task at hand, which is somehow overcoming the overwhelming numbers of French forces currently arrayed against us and our attempts to maneuver around France are proving unsuccessful. So having dodged the bullet of the War of the Roses, we're going to start transporting troops from England back to the south of France to engage what I would call phase two of this strategy, which is the sovereign strategy. The, the time for eliminating small French stacks of forces and their vassals has really passed now that they've started taking over our provinces. 
Now we move on to the Sovereign strategy where we're trying to fight set piece engagements but only in Navarre, only when we can impose a minus three modifier penalty on the French forces. Otherwise don't fight the battle because it could go either way. And like I said, it's disastrous losing a single battle against the French in the Hundred Years' War. You can win every battle and still lose the Hundred Years' War. That's how difficult this achievement has become. Obviously, it becomes easier if you're save and reloading, but this is, of course, on Iron Man mode. So, no, no saves coming for us, although there was certainly a time when, you know, obviously, saving and reloading was a staple part of my EU3 days. But we've progressed a bit since then playing on Iron Man, a great feature of EU4. Alright, so as you can see there, you probably thought that I was about to send those 14,000 man in a suicide mission into the board. The reality was, again, I was just trying to trick the AI, uh, sending forces into a province and then aborting their movement at the last possible date. Oftentimes will force the French to abandon sieges or put our troops out of position and open them up for a counter-attack, so we're, com we're still going by the maxim of using maneuverability and establishing local superiority to eliminate small stacks of French troops. Now, it, there's an opportunity here to attack a Hungarian army, but I calculate whether or not I'll have the time to defeat the stack and decide it's not possible. Unfortunately, that Hungarian king appears to have four fire and four shock which is superior to the best generals that I can currently field and given the fact that they've got 9,000 men with French troops nearby I decide that fighting that type of battle would be a huge mistake. So we're going to send our troops into Bern again in the attempt to uh, and so falls Gascogne to the Hungarian forces no, le no less. Obviously Hungary has nothing better to do right now than fight in the fields of France. With their four shock, four fire leader. Nonetheless, this is the reality of fighting the Hundred Years War in patch 1.9.2. Another big change that I haven't really mentioned but it's absolutely been huge and you'll see why in a moment is the overall to attrition in patch 1.92. Now attrition doesn't work cumulatively, and what that means is if you have two armies, say the French and the Hungarians have two armies of 10,000 on one of my provinces is a 10 supply limiter, then despite the fact that they have seemingly 20,000 troops in a 10 supply province, they will receive no attrition, and that's because the armies aren't combined, they have two different factions, whereas if it was just the French with 20,000 men on a 10 supply limiter province, they'd be suffering massive attrition, so that significantly buffs the ability of the French and their vassals to win the Hundred Years' War and prevents them from suffering huge attrition, and you'll see in, in due course why that has made such a huge uh, change to the difficulty level of winning the Hundred Years' War. But for now we're entering into a uh, sort of slower period of the game. They're about to complete the Siege of Normandy, so and there it falls, right in queue. And now the challenge for me is going to be re-establishing my 100% blockade. Obviously this patch is also post-trade nerfs. In patch 1.9, I believe, trade was massively buffed, giving England basically unlimited economic strength. Trade has subsequently been nerfed, and with our light ships in the south of France blockading the Mediterranean ports, our income is very low. We will be taking loans uh, to win the Hundred Years' War. And you can see war exhaustion there. The French are reducing their war exhaustion. I'm checking out provinces' war exhaustion and realizing that there's very little chance that I'm going to be able to force them out of a war with purely in the basis of my blockade. Nonetheless, I uh, decide that I have to prioritize the French blockade over the blockade of province, and I realize I can't do that with nine light ships blockading province, so I'm going to reroute my forces to Gascogne and Laborde to blockade the newly conquered French provinces that were formerly mine. We're check, taking a look at Rebel Faction. I have very high war exhaustion at this stage. And I've sent my army from Aragon to Provence. 
Uh, this, I have no designs to stab, to achieve anything with this army. I don't risk fighting in Auvergne because of the high levels of attrition, despite the mountains. So we're going to add tensions between noble and clergy. So uh, 15 noble regiments rising up would be in Yorkshire would be absolutely disastrous for this playthrough. So I have to take the papal relations hit and hope that no one excommunicates me. We're going to work to improve our relations with the papacy now. And just trying to reassert our 100% blockade of France. Their war exhaustion has been significantly reduced because they've been spending, uh, I believe it's is it diplomatic power in order to reduce their war exhaustion. Of course, I'm not doing that yet because I'm uh, trying to save my diplomatic power for any unforeseen eventualities. And we're just playing around with our blockades to see if we can spare any light ships to generate trade in the English Channel, which Burgundy is currently dominating at the moment. Soon, uh, sooner will, uh, in the future, will be sending significant numbers of troops to Aragon and Navarre to try and entice the French into attacking with a minus three modifier, but for now, we're just trying to reform our blockade uh, before we commit to any offensive military action. Yearly papal influence is pretty much useless given, given the Tolerates Lollards event, so I would always opt for the plus 10 prestige at this stage in the game because you cannot count on getting any papal influence in the first portion of the game as England, unfortunately. That's just how the game works. Another reason why I recommend converting to either Reformed or Protestantism at the first opportunity. Cap the Catholic religion really does not serve the English in the EU4 up until the very late stages in the game. And we're trying to uh, entice the French into maneuvering their forces so that we can identify an isolated army. Of course, it's not working. With all provinces siege, they've got no reason to have small groups of armies out in the map. So they can combine their forces and just wait it out. At this stage, I'm realizing that we really have to make a move and progress to the second phase of the game, which is using uh, the sovereign strategy, which is enticing the French army to attack us in Navarre. And there you can see my war exhaustion level getting dangerously high, but 6.69 is still acceptable for this stage in the game. We do not want to have to deal with rebels, however, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Theoretically, you can fight the Hundred Years' War well into the late 1450s, but bearing in mind the costs associated with rebels and war exhaustions and manpower, it's going to significantly limit you, so whether or not it would be worth it is, is up for debate. We, as you can see here, we've won every single battle. And we're still significantly outnumbered. Reverts back to my theme of you can win every battle in the Hundred Years' War and still easily lose. That's how heavily things are stacked against you. And we're going to finally commit to that sovereign strategy I was referring to, transporting all our troops to the south of France, straddled across Navarre and Aragon, it, it, for the potential of fighting some defensive battles in Navarre. And if we can prevail there, we can go over to the offensive, which is ultimately what we will have to do in the final stage of a war to win. You must have Paris occupied and a large portion of France occupied in order to force a personal union. You cannot force a personal union through battles alone. Okay, it appears that the French are going to launch an attack in Navarre, like I was telling you about. France will often attack uh, through this avenue, especially when they've successfully sieged all your provinces, so we need to hurry reinforcements over there right away. I also make the decision now, the important decision, the reason why you have the plus two diplomatic reputation advisor to fall in Portugal. This is a bit of a panic move, because I calculate that with France hitting me so hard in the bat, if Portugal comes to my aid in this battle, that would be extremely useful and can turn the tide. 
As you can see here, we're getting decent rolls, but it's absolutely critical that we reinforce these forces as soon as possible to restore our morale. France is almost identical to morale to me at the moment, and that's because we haven't really been beating the French army, we've been attacking their vassals and the Hungarians, but we haven't really been fighting pitched battles against the French, so they haven't suffered nearly as much war exhaustion and prestige loss as we would like. Of course, Jean Bureau, famous French, uh, French general who ultimately prevailed against the English in the Battle of Castillon, has a famed artillery train of something like uh, 300 heavy guns, and that is represented in the fact that he has four fire in the U4. Lower maneuver, though, which prevents them from eliminating the minus three modifiers in the van. And we are winning this battle, which is critical. Although we suffered extremely high casualties, which is common when the French go out all out in the offensive. I think we killed 8,600, lost about 5,000 men there, so... The, the engagement is only worthwhile from the point of view of inflicting war exhaustion and prestige loss in the enemy. From a purely manpower and numeric point of view, we suffered an unacceptable rate of loss in that battle. And so there is an opportunity to stack right a 7,000 man Hungarian army here, but I calculated that the risk of a 30,000 man French reserve stack being committed to the battle could would, would, would be far, far too high. 7,000 Hungarian army is basically worthless. We're not really concerned about inflicting attrition on the Hungarians, so I decide not to. It's a too great a risk. If I were to lose uh, even half of my 14,000 man army in the south of France, that would be absolutely devastating for us. So as frustrating as it is, we just sort of have to sit this part of the game out. We're pretty happy in that we've won every single major engagement and minor. We've inflicted 100% blockade in France, we've badly damaged their vassals, and we have naval superiority. But we're still heavily outnumbered on land, and with the four provinces occupied by France, we're suffering extremely high levels of war exhaustion. They have 67,000 men combined at this present moment. And we have about 30,000 one men, so 30, 31,000 men. So despite winning every single battle, still outnumbered two to one, which is fairly typical at this stage in the game. But all is not lost. We can prevail, and it all revolves around that theme that I was talking about of enticing the Burgundians to attack France. As you can see here. France is gearing up for another possible attack in Navarre. And they're suffering absolutely zero attrition due to the overhaul to attrition I was telling you about, with the attrition no longer uh, having effect cumulatively. So, as you can see, 53,000 men on a province uh, with a supply limit of around 20 would, in the previous iteration of the game, be suffering absolutely massive attrition, and that is how I used to win. You can see their supply limit 20, 53,000 men suffering absolutely zero attrition. This is why the difficulty level of winning the Hundred Years' War has been increased so dramatically. In the previous iteration, that army would be reduced to a heap of nothingness in about six or seven months, but right now it's suffering zero attrition, which means those 53,000 men have to be defeated somehow by us. It's very frustrating to look at, but I also approve of it. It, it. Anything that enhances the AI, or at least the AI's capacity to wage war, I view as a good thing, because EU4 can become quite easy, especially in the late game. Well, provided if you're playing as one of the major powers, England has a, a notoriously strong late game. And 33,000 men are now moving into Navarre. We've got troops on hand to reinforce it, but we're not sure if they're actually going to attack or they're going to 
they're going to bait us out because uh, right now they, they seem to be a bit conflicted in what they want to do. Nonetheless, we've got 7,000 troops on our fleet standing by in an event that they do attack. I doubt my 14,000 men would have the capacity to resist 40 or 50,000 for very long at all, so it's very important we have reserves and standby. Again, very little I can do at this stage. I'm slowly starting to formulate a new plan. I'm realizing that they're not going to attack us here, even if I even if I strip away some of the defenses in the front line. So I'm going to pivot towards a more offensive strategy. I'm looking at my economy. I'm in zero income. I'm starting to accumulate loans. My income's dropping dramatically. And so I'm realizing that this stage in the game, I, I'm going to have to be a bit more proactive. Sixty-one thousand troops are raided against me. Easily twice the numbers I can field, and not attacking, and suffering no attrition. And there's a loan, so we got several loans now. Income slowly sliding. That's due to the fact that we've lost such a dramatic amount of trade power, with our light ships being occupied, blockading France, and with our provinces fully occupied. And of course the Hungarian general still loyal at the French side with the 4-4 stats. But we're still confident we can win. Calling in Portugal has been a major asset. It's helped even up the balance of forces. They have very good generals and decent troops. Uh, although few in number. But 12,000 is better than nothing. And so this is a very common event. The last jousting tournament. This is a huge asset. Providing 10% morale plus 1 army tradition. I believe it triggers when you have over plus 20 army tradition. For I'm not absolutely sure about it. I find it triggers most of the time. When you're fighting the 100 years war. And it will give you a major boost to stats. And will allow your army to fight extremely effectively against the French. The morale bonus is absolutely critical. The yearly army tradition is helpful. But it's not going to be that important at this phase in the game. Especially considering the fact that we have very good generals already. Although yearly army tradition does boost morale as well. And so you can see here, there they can access burn much quicker than we can from the bar. So our, our, attempt to, our attempt to go in the offense, offensive here in the south of France is... Uh, coming to a frustrating end and really at this stage in the game we're starting to uh, there's a second loan we're starting to realize the, the enormity of the, the the challenge it faces us we're heavily outnumbered and, the, and with all our provinces occupied and we can't seem to capitalize on any weak targets because they've massed all their forces in the south of France Again, just trying to pull some of the French troops out of position. Would have been a very effective uh, strategy in the former patches, but with overall to attrition, they're suffering absolutely zero damage, and so we're really at a stalemate phase here. They know they can't attack me and win, and I know I can't attack them and win. So it's very hard to see at this phase in the game how exactly I'm going to triumph here. But all is not lost. Gascogne has become the new seat of Con a cardinal. Absolutely no relevance to us winning the Hundred Years' War. In fact, could prove to be an extremely bad thing if we lose, but we'll take everything we can get at this stage. War exhaustion becoming dangerously high at this stage. And you can see the real challenges of fighting the 100 years war in patch 1.92. You can't, despite winning every battle, I'm significantly outnumbered and outmaneuvered. With higher war exhaustion than the French. And probably a weaker economy. And so, unfortunately, it's a choice between a 1 stability hit and a 3 inflation. 1 stability hit would bring us to minus 1, which is 
has a significant adverse impact on our entire country. Free inflation we can deal with later. It's always a risk calling in Portugal to the Hundred Years War because I find they have the most atrocious morale. I've literally seen two or three thousand Portuguese troops attack via Navarre into Labord against 30 or 40,000 French troops just being absolutely obliterated. But I made the call to call them in and now I have to live with it. So I calculate here that I can reach Bern first. The only decision is whether I want to fight in Bern with a minus two modifier. Used to be minus three, but they changed Bern from mountainous to hilly, which I believe confers it only with a minus one modifier, plus the extra minus one you get for there being a river. So not nearly as strong a position to fight the French as it was formerly. I generally recommend not fighting pitch battles in Bern. Better to stick with Navarre, Perino or Girona, avoiding Roussillon and Bern. And as you can see we're losing minus 12, minus 13 income per month. And things are not looking so good. Our economies and tattoos. We still have we still have full force limits with uh I believe thirty five thousand troops. And we have a decent reserve of eight thousand manpower, so from a military point of view we're doing fairly well. And you can see here France would accept a white piece at this stage in the game, but we're not after a white piece. We're after acquiring the French throne. And we'll accept nothing less. And so it begins, our strategy has paid off, and this is what you want to see. Burgundy has declared war on France, that provokes an immediate reaction from France, all their forces are moving south, and this is the moment we've been waiting for and we have to fully capitalize on it. So I'm going to reinforce my blockade, I now conclude that I'll no longer need my 14 transport ships, we can go all out in the offensive, so I transfer my 14 transport ships to, com to complete the blockade of France. French troops are being horridly moved north to deal with Burgundian threat and this will open up opportunities for us. Our aim now is regardless of the outcome of the Burgundian French battles we want to try and move in and pick off whatever weak French stacks we can. this stage we're very confident we've gone from desolate sadness to extreme optimism that we can win because the Burgundians can field massive armies at this stage of the game with huge numbers of mercenaries and aren't hindered with a navy like the French are and as you can see here in Poitou there's already been a French stroke vassal army that's been badly beaten up and is on zero morale and provides us with an opportunity to stack wipe And our focus now is going to be eliminating the French army in the field of battle and then following up with a carpet siege of the south of France. And we successfully stack right, stack right that army, picking off another small target. And the Portuguese have become hyper aggressive, censoring victory perhaps. And we're going to support them now, whereas before I would not have supported the Portuguese if they had launched a suicidal head on attack into the French overwhelming numbers. But now that the Burgundians are in the fray, we can support the Portuguese because we have numbers on our side through an informal alliance. And we're going to start trying to siege Gascogne and Laborde while supporting the Portuguese in their battle in Maine, aiming to stack wipe the small French armies. I can only presume right now the majority of France's armies are currently engaged in the pitch battle against the majority of the Burgundian armies, given the fact that I can't see them. I assume that's happening in Champagne.
and that's not 8,000 enemy troops defeated. And we're going to move our army north, the largest army, to scout and find out what's happening, where the French army is, to see if we have to pull back our troops in the south, who are currently very vulnerable to a counterattack. Be very careful when you start sieging initially, because the French can appear out of nowhere and start destroying your sieging forces, which would still be devastating. We haven't lost a battle yet, so why start now? So we see the Burgundian army obviously defeated the French army, given the fact that they're in Nemour and they have reasonably high morale. We don't know where the French army is, but we can assume it's out there somewhere, perhaps replenishing. And so we're going to move south to try and interdict it. And another theme of this part of the conflict, as the French try to reinforce with mercenaries and troops, we need to eliminate those stacks one at a time. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. They've been training troops in Normandy, Cao and Alençon. We want to eliminate them ASAP and ensure that they cannot uh, form up the type of 60,000 man stacks they had just a few months earlier. And you can see the balance of forces have dramatically swung in our favour. We now outnumber the French. We have 10 war exhaustion. And given the prospect of rebels appearing very soon, I make the decision to burn through some diplomatic power to reduce exhaustion. I would not I would ordinarily recommend against this at this stage in the game. Because, of course, when the war ends, war exhaustion will deteriorate on its own accord at minus uh, 0.1 a month. However... Uh, given how close we are to winning, it would be a shame if we started seeing uh, large-scale rebellions, especially in Ireland, which would be a huge distraction. So we're going to ensure that we commit all our resources to winning the Hundred Years' War. In spite, and here's a huge battle that I helped reinforce. We eliminated 13,000 French troops, and that effectively defeats the French. From this point on, it becomes a mopping up operation. Make ver make absolute care to ensure that it's not the Burgundians who siege Ile de France, because you we have the mission to occupy Paris. So what you can do is you can take that mission once you occupy Paris and make sure you're the one occupying it, not the Burgundians. You get fabricated claims in the entire north of France. If you play the Hundred Years War perfectly, what you will do is you'll make sure that you. Uh, fully defeat province and then annex uh, Maine and Anjou from province in a separate piece before performing a union with France. That'll help you build up some more assets in France, increasing your strength, decreasing the likelihood that France will attempt to break out of the union later on in the game. So we're just carefully determining uh, what provinces are safe to siege at this point, also going after the French troops that are currently reinforcing. And they will very aggressively attempt to defend their cities, so whatever troops they do build, they'll attempt to successfully move maneuver to, sat to uh, rescue provinces like Bern, Gascon, Le Bord that they currently occupy or hold. So we're going to go after them aggressively, ensuring that they can't stack up like they had been previously, keeping their stacks as low as possible, whilst establishing a, a siege, and always prioritising that we're the ones who occupy Paris, because of course that is the war goal in any personal Union war. And we eliminate another 3,000 troops from Armenier. Right now our economy is in decent shape, we haven't that many mercenaries at all and we still have 7,500 manpower so we're by no means in a critical situation, unlike the French who certainly are at this stage. All the while trying to establish a carpet siege of France and we see some troops 
that are currently massing in Provence. There's four, which is a little on the high side, so we want to go after them aggressively and assure that the French can't rally up any more troops than 4,000 in any one province. See, they have another stack in Limousine right now, moving north, no doubt to relieve the siege of Paris. Absolutely important that we intercept them and defeat them. All the while continuing with our mop-up operation. At this stage, the war is certainly looking like it's coming to a conclusion, but as I said, we do want to uh, complete this video, we want to fight this war until its ultimate conclusion, which can only be until when France is under a union with England. Incidentally, it may be easier to force a personal union on England as France at the moment. If you've seen that guide in EU4, I thoroughly recommend you give it a give it a look. But given the fact that every time I seem to play this game, I end up playing the same old faction England over and over again. I think I think I'll be keeping true to that tradition. England and Spain. You can see the Portuguese obviously have military access from Burgundy, something I'm not able to achieve. So if you can see in the Burgundian capital, there's actually Portuguese troops going after French forces that like to mass there. And the French are still aggressively reinforcing, reinforcing, trying to recruit whatever troops they can from whatever available provinces they still have. So it's very critical we go after these aggressively and ensure that they can't rally up. And at this moment, it's probably just a good idea to go through the various stages of what led us up to this point. The first stage was successfully evacuating our troops, establishing a blockade, and combining local superiority of forces to take out as many French troops and French vassal troops as possible. The second stage was us transitioning over to defense of Navarre and our sovereign strategy of occasionally going on the offense and trying to draw the French forces down to the south. And then the third stage, which will hopefully be procured when the Burgundians attack France, is going on an immediate counter-attack, waiting for the French forces to either defeat or be defeated by the Burgundians, and then attacking them when they're weak, all the while avoiding the type of pitch battles that could go very poorly for you if numbers were even. As you can see, we only have one advisor at this stage because of floundering economy. We set our national focus to military, although what you do with your national focus, to be honest, is fairly irrelevant. You're not going to beat France to Tech 4, in my experience. In fact, I think they're already Tech 4 military, so bear that in mind. It's a ticking clock, because if you can get to the late stages, past 1452, 1453, it's very likely that France will have higher military tech. And as you can see, they do have 0.7 military tactics now, so... That's why, that's why these battles have become a lot harder. So if you think you can out-tech the French by setting up your national focus to military, then think again, they'll often get there quicker than you. Which will be disastrous. Siege of Bern still ongoing. Burgundians are sieging up just the right provinces. We want to make sure that the really rich provinces we get to siege because we're going to use their income to sustain our economy right up until the end of the war. 
we had a huge opportunity here to, to siege province, which I sincerely regret not doing, because if we had done that, we would have been able to force a separate peace with province, whereby they cede Maine and Anjou to us, that we can directly annex. That would significantly boost our power, and we would have cause in them from sieging Paris through the mission that gives us fabricated claims in all the north of France. Something to remember for next time. And there's Jean Bureau attacking our leader's army in Ile de France. As you can see, the battle's going very badly for us given their high levels of military tactics. But at this stage, we're fairly confident we can win out the war. Burgundians have not suffered very heavy casualties, as you can see they still have huge armies roaming about France. And that's certainly going to be a concern for later on, because of course Burgundi Bur Burgundy is going to become my main threat after this war is over. On the plus side, uh, successfully forming a union with France will automatically end the war between Burgundy and France. So you don't have to worry about being dragged to a war with Burgundy right after completing your war with France. In spite of what the tooltip says, you won't be dragged into another war with Burgundy. And we make the decision to revoke the embargo of France at this stage. Embargoes are very useful for power projection. Uh, however, right now I'm becoming conscious of the main threat, aside from Burgundy, which is Fran my leader dying instantly after the war concludes and France breaking the Union, which has happened to me on occasion. So you want to immediately transition into improving your relations with France once the war has been completed. Of course, we refuse French peace offers out of hand. We're only fighting this war for one thing in mind at this stage. Incidentally, we're also trying to win the war and sue for peace uh, before Burgundy has the opportunity to create a separate peace with France. Hence part of the reason why it's absolutely essential that we're the ones who occupy Paris and not the Burgundians. At this stage, the French are running out of provinces from which they can recruit units. Paris is at 35%. And at this stage, given that our prestige is maxed out at 99, we opt to go for the extra administrative power. Seizure burn lasted 663 days. And France is operating at 12.78 war exhaustion. Also, take note that at this phase, it can be it can become very easy to overextend. Bearing in mind that this this phase of the operations of 
carpet seating all of France's provinces, impose a very high attrition cost on all your forces, extremely high actually, and that's why you see my manpower levels dwindling so dangerously low. So you just have to be careful because you're suffering a massive amount of attrition, and occasionally the French can rally up enough troops to start doing a lot of damage to your your forces sieging French towns, so always bear that in mind. You can see here they're, they're trying to take advantage of whatever opportunities they can. And resolve not to lose any more manpower on this war. Constantly repositioning my forces, anticipating their attacks. I'm still not at military tech level 4, whereas France has been for some time now. Although this army is from uh, Provence, I believe. Really regretting not taking the opportunity to siege Provence. As you can see, Brittany, sensing weakness, has declared war on Provence and is now sieging their capital. Something I would have liked to have done. Also take note of this fact that at this stage in the game I haven't lost a single defeat to France. All our battles have been military victories. While in theory you can suffer defeats whilst fighting the Hundred Years' War, depending on the scale of the defeats, if you suffer one big defeat, I think it's very hard to recover from, especially since that increases the likelihood of Burgundy attacking you. still making most use out of the last jousting tournament buff, a huge asset. Although probably not at all necessary uh, at this phase in the game since it occurred just before Burgundy declared war in France. I don't think it would have made a difference either way. Always nice, very helpful if you get in the opening phases of 100 years or less helpful later on. Just waiting on the Ile de France to fall. Also aiming to capture as many French ships as possible when we siege their ports. Should a single transport ship. With a hundred prestige and our last jousting tournament buffs, our armies, despite being in a lower tech level, are pretty much invincible. And France has and Paris has fallen. And as you can see, our next target should be fairly obvious, but for now. Sadly, the, 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 only, the only province that you can request in addition to forming a union with France is some 
province in the, the south of the country that it isn't very important. So if you do uh, form a union with France, bearing ma bear in mind that you're not going to be able to achieve anything else from them aside from a bit of income or whatever. I wanted to take Maine and Anjou by forming a separate peace with province, but as you can see, my war score wasn't high enough, and given the fact that Brittany is sieging their capital, I realized that to delay the war to uh, take those provinces would be would be unadvisable. There's the fabricated claims I got from the mission occupying Paris. And province is nowhere near to accepting that offer. Always trying to maximize our victory. But not in this case. In this case, we're just going to have to be satisfied with our goal. The greed. Armagnac would be a great province because we have a core in it, but it brings us to 102 war score, which is obviously out of our ability. There's the province that France uh, we, we, that will bring us below 100 war score, but I decide it's not worth it, especially given the fact that we don't have a fabricated claim there. And that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this guide on how to win the 100 years war on patch 1.9.2. It is not easy, indeed this is my fourth recorded video on the subject, being my fourth attempt. The other three attempts followed a similar strategy and failed for one reason or another. The main source of my failure was getting very bad rolls in the type of battles you see in Navarre when the French attack. If you get bad rolls there and you lose a few major engagements, it's absolutely disastrous. But here the rules went reasonably well. We got some lucky events. We avoided the War of the Roses and we've now formed a personal union with France. So that is it, folks. That is how you do it. That is how you win the 100 Years War in patch 1.9.2. I hope you enjoyed this video. I've had a lot of fun making it. Don't get too frustrated if you're not able to win the 100 Years War immediately. This guide has been instructional, but as is also clear that it is highly dependent on a set of factors going your way, such as triggered events. And as I said, if you can win the 100 Years War without Burgundy intervening by attacking France, then that is absolutely terrific, and I would love to see that video. But for me, I'm afraid this is as good as I can do it. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you if you've made it this entire way to the end of the video. I hope it's been tremendously enjoyable for you. And this is Oscar Mike here then signing out, and I'll see you next time.